The small arms ammunition group is limited to a maximum projectile diameter of six tenths of an inch. The 50, 30, and 45 caliber cartridges are the most commonly used of that group by most ground and air forces. The 50 caliber cartridge is adopted as the modern standard for heavy machine gun fire and is the most effective of all small arms ammunition when employed against opposing aircraft, bomber, pursuit, or interceptor. The 30 caliber cartridge, although practically obsolete for aerial use, is still the standard for ground forces and is also effectively used by aircraft for ground strafing. The 45 caliber cartridge has a very effective striking power at close range and is therefore used for close in defense and attack. The 50 caliber ball cartridge has a plain unpainted projectile tip. In peacetime, 50 caliber ammunition is packed in cartons, 10 rounds to the carton. During wartime, they are issued in belt links. Different cartridges are filled with different cores. 50 caliber ball bullets contain a soft steel core. The 30, as well as the 45 caliber, is filled with antimonial lead. The armor-piercing cartridge has a black projectile tip, which classifies it immediately as armor-piercing, even when separated from its container. The core of the armor-piercing projectile leaves the jacket when striking armor plate. The core of most armor-piercing projectiles is made of manganese molybdenum steel. It has a lead slug in the tip, which, with the nose of the jacket, acts as a starter for the armor-piercing core when striking armor plate. As it hits, the jacket with the leading lead slug crumples and folds back, partially melting with a rapid fusing action after making contact, the armor-piercing core continuing through the armor. During peacetime, tracer ammunition also comes in cartons. The standard wartime packing is in metallic belt links or fabric machine gun belts. The tips of tracer projectiles are painted red. Here, the tracer composition has been removed from the jacket, but clearly it would fill half of the projectile. The tracer is preceded by a solid lead ball, which fills the nose of the copper jacket. The 50 caliber tracer will burn for approximately eight seconds. In actual firing, the tracer composition is ignited by the flame of the propellant powder. The purpose of these tracer projectiles is to enable the gunner to direct the spray of bullets upon the target. This action is particularly valuable to aircraft gunnery, where fighting is done at high speeds. The 30 caliber cartridge, except for size, is essentially identical with 50 caliber ammunition. This is true of all types. The 45 caliber ball and the 45 caliber tracer have the same general construction as the 30 caliber ammunition. The ball carrying a solid lead slug in the jacket and the tracer having a lead slug preceding the tracer composition. The 45 caliber tracer is distinguished by a red tip. The tracer burns for a comparatively short time. The cases of the 50 and the 30 caliber cartridges are more narrow at the mouth than at the head. That is, they have a neck and shoulder. The neck is thinner than the rest of the case and is of springy brass, which allows it to expand during firing and to contract after the expulsion of all propellant gases. During manufacture, the cartridge is waterproofed with an application of varnish. Then, when the projectile is inserted, this varnish, plus the crimp of the mouth, fitting into the cannelure or groove of the projectile, prevents the projectile from coming loose during handling.
In rifles or machine guns, the igniting of the propellant is accomplished in this manner. The primer is fired when struck by the firing pin, which pinches the igniting mixture between the brass cup and the anvil. A flame is thus produced, which passes through a vent hole in the body of the case. This flame, in turn, ignites the propellant. The copper alloy jacket of the projectile is soft enough to allow the rifling of the weapon's barrel to cut grooves into the jacket, rotating the projectile and creating a centrifugal force in flight that prevents wobbling or tumbling. The softness of the jacket also allows the metal to fit tightly enough against the walls of the barrel to prevent the propellant gases from escaping ahead of the projectile. The rifling cuts are deep and definite, demonstrating how tightly the jacket fits into the barrel. In the use of all small arms ammunition, three very definite factors should be considered. Cartridges should never be oil. From a mistake such as this, high pressures or desensitizing of the primer may result. Secondly, if cartridges in links or clips should become dirty, they should be removed from the links or clips for cleaning. Thirdly, during combat or range firing, there is great danger of rebound or ricochet. This is true of all types of ammunition, though especially of armor piercing, when complete penetration is not accomplished. The danger area may be assumed, depending upon varying conditions, as a 200 yard radius from the object. Naturally, no fast rule for rebound or ricochet can be arrived at, as there are too many erratic factors. However, this danger should be seriously considered when the gun crew or other friendly troops are within this area. On land or in the air, your security depends on your ammunition. Use it properly and it will serve you well. <laughs>